you're about to take what could well be the most important tour of your life. It's going to be a worldview tour. We are going to turn and gaze upon the face of God. What should we hear? What should we see? You are going to be amazed. Why did Jesus come into the world? Do you know who Jesus is? Do you know? From time to time, we're going to bring some experts into the classroom. The world is reeling with uncertainty. It's almost like it's in the air. Truth is fundamentally about who God is. We're challenged to either confront culture, to abandon it, or transform it. Is our culture filled with lies? This is a battle of worldviews. Do you really believe that what you believe is really real? Evil, what is it? Where did it come from? Why is it in the world? Who is God? Who is God? Who is man? What does God say about who man is? What takes us captive? What is insanity? What is the world's view of work? God is a God of social order. We're going to look at economic, art, media, music, and literature in this sphere of labor. We're going to look at the area of philosophy and ethics. Everything is about relationships. There is no direction you can travel in which God has not spoken. Good morning. That was a little preview of the Truth Project. I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. Um, it's been around for about 20 years. I've had the privilege of leading it, oh, probably a dozen times in the last 12 or 13 years. Um, the late Chuck Colson, um, who many of you may be familiar with, made the statement before he died. He said, the church's singular failure in recent decades has been the failure to see Christianity as a life system or worldview that governs every area of existence. I think since he's made that statement, that's only become more true. I know you've heard Jim say from the pulpit more than once that the biblical worldview in America currently stands at 4%. That's 4% of the people in this nation that see the reality around them from the perspective that God has revealed to us. If you do that poll among self-professing Christians, it rises to an anemic 6%. In other words, very few people, even among Christians, properly perceive reality. And that reality can only be attained by looking to God himself. This project that Focus on the Family put out near 20 years ago, led by Dr. Del Tackett, is probably one of the best studies I've seen for helping us to come to understand things as only God can reveal it to us. Not just in a couple areas, but in a both systematic and comprehensive way of seeing things, not just for knowledge, but so that we come to understand who God is and how he has designed us to live, so that we can take that ideology and apply it to all those different areas of our life uh, and the world around us. And so I'd invite you to consider this. Um, we are going to start this out our way, which is roughly 10 miles northwest of Staples, starting next Sunday night on January the 7th um, at 6 p.m. So if that works, please get a hold of me. Um, otherwise, we are looking at starting it in this area the following week. Um, we haven't determined the time and place because I kind of need to see who's interested in what works for everyone's schedule. So if you're interested, talk to me. We'll kind of figure out the timing that works for everybody, and we'll go from there. Thank you. Well, good morning. Happy New Year. Nice to see you all here today. Beautiful morning to come and gather together in the house of the Lord and serve and worship Him. Happy to be here again another Sunday. Got a couple announcements I want to go with through with you this morning. Um, first of all, monthly newsletters in there. Um, I was talking with Jim about... Uh, and we need to, we put a lot into that to to let you know where we're at and where our heart is. So I just figure I'll just read it word for word this morning for y'all. No, I'm not going to do that. But I encourage you to read that. There's a lot in there. It just kind of explains where we're going, where we're at, and what's going on here in the church. There's a lot of information in there. So take the 20 minutes to read through that. You'll uh, you'll be glad you did. So that's in there. Um, the uh, bulletin's actually a little bit light this week, which is nice. Celebrate recovery again tonight at 6 o'clock for everyone. Everyone's welcome to be there. It's a wonderful event and, uh, and group. So if you have any interest in that, um, talk to me, talk to Jim, talk to uh, Dale and Carla. 
They'll get you pointed in the right direction. We have a New Year's Eve event going on here tonight at the church at 9 p.m., and it's going to go till midnight. Uh, we're going to have some snacks and, and kind of a potluck, bring a snack kind of for everyone. Um, some games, we'll have uh, some things for the kids. We're going to have a beanbag tournament with some prizes. And then we're going to bring the year in with some prayer. So that's our goal for tonight. So if you're interested in that, bring the kids. It should be a fun event. So that's at 9 p.m. tonight here at the church. Uh, there is... Uh, uh, Grief Share is starting or resuming again this Tuesday, um, 6 to 8. You can talk to Sherry about that. And there is no Awana again this week. We're still off for the Christmas break. So no Awana this week. But Wednesday night church uh, will be going. So come and be a part of that if, you would, uh, if you'd like to. It's been wonderful. It's been a really sweet time uh, just getting to know people and diving into the Word of God. So that's been, been fun. So um, I want you to make a special note of that 13th and 14th there, January 13th and 14th. It's a little ways out, but there's just a lot going on them two days with the women's meeting, the ladies' luncheon, the annual meeting in Potluck, and Brian Thorsted with uh, revealing the church revitalization that we went through. So I invite you all to be a part of that, especially that 14th. Um, it's just a, kind of an unveiling of everything Brian came up with, and he's going to be on Zoom. We'll bring him in to share with us uh, after the second service and after the potluck. So that's what that's all about. If you've got any further questions, you can surely talk to Jim or myself about that. And then uh, the prayer focus, always changing, always uh, in need of prayer. Lots of names on there. Uh, there were some added just this morning. So, Lord, to just uh, be reading through them and, and praying for them, people in our local ministries around our area. Um, and that's just God is moving in that. So let's, uh, let's seek Him in prayer this morning before we go any further. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. Lord God, we thank you for bringing us here. I believe nobody's here by accident. Lord, we're here to serve and worship you. Lord, we thank you for the people that are joining us online this morning, that they can come and be a part of this through that media. Lord, just move in your way. Have your way this morning through the worship this morning, through Jim's message this morning, through our Sunday school classes that we have going on, our kids' church, and everything else, Lord, just move in your way. And around our, our whole community here, there's other churches doing the same thing we are, Lord, giving praise and worship and glory to you. So just have your hand in all that, and it's going on around the world. If you can wrap your brain around that, this whole globe is worshiping and praising you this morning. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for going into another new year. You've blessed us with another new year coming, and uh, we know you're outside of time, and it's here for us, but it shows you're a God of order, and that you want things to work in a certain way, and we thank you for all of that. Lord, just be with all of us today as we sing praises and worship to you through, during our songs and time, of, and time of message. And Lord, I just lift up that prayer focus to you. There's lots of names on there. Cancers and hurts and loss of loved ones and local ministries that are serving you. So Lord, we just give it to you. We, we take it to the throne this morning and lay it there. Lord, we love you and we just pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to welcome the worship team up here this morning. We're just going to go right into song this morning due to our, uh, our presentation we had. So we'll invite them up to, uh, to lead us in, in worship. start with um, some maybe not as uh, well-known hymns this morning, but um, we figured we'd do one more week of Christmas hymns, and so I, I hope you know these. The first one we're going to sing is Good Christian Men Rejoice.
sing is called How Great Our Joy. Star of Bethlehem.
Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity that we have here, Lord Jesus, to come into your holy presence, to gather together and sing praises to your name. Father, we just thank you again, Lord, for the week that you brought us through. Father, we thank you for the new year that we are about to embark upon and all that that um, entails, Lord. We look forward with excitement to what you alone are going to do through this next year. And Father, as we come here to hear from you this morning, we just pray again for our pastor, that you fill him and use him, Lord Jesus. May he be a mouthpiece for you this morning that speaks directly to our hearts and changes our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Children headed to Children's Church, you are dismissed. Hopefully you have a wonderful time learning this morning also. I want to mention a couple of welcome to you on Facebook Live this morning too. We're glad that you could join us. This is the last Sunday of the year already. Can you believe that? 2023 has just disappeared, just vanished, it seems like. And here we are on the uh, edge of another year. And so I wanted to give a couple more announcement type things before I go any further. If you were part of the Christmas Eve service last week, what a blessing. Thank you so much for contributing and being part of that. It was just such a wonderful night. The music and the word, I just thought it was just such a wonderful night. So thank you to all of you that helped with that and make that possible. Sherry and I also would like to thank you for your generosity and cards and letters and gifts to us this Christmas season. Thank you so much. You're so gracious and you've blessed us so. We just so appreciate it. This isn't in the bulletin, but it should have been, or could have been at least. Next week we will have communion. So if you're watching this morning online and uh, want to prepare for that at the close of the services next week, we will have communion together too. You know, when you think back on this year, I know a lot of you can think of, man, I'm glad that year's over, I'm looking forward to a new one. But when I think back on it, even though there's been heartache and difficulties, I think, praise the Lord for being with us. Praise the Lord for being with us through ups and downs and ins and outs and challenging times. And so I'm thankful that God has walked with us through this journey. So this is the last Sunday of 2023 and I was thinking how do we close this out and how do we start the new year so I've chosen a couple of scripture passages and a couple of quotes from people from long ago to challenge us to propel us into the into the new year so that first quote first if you've got that Kristen Back in the early 1600s, people were starting to arrive in America by ship from what we called the old country. They were coming to look for a place where they could worship the Lord freely. Now, if you know anything about history or if you've been at Plymouth Rock, you know that the first ones came in 1620, 21. But by 1630, there were some more ships that came, and on one of those ships was a man by the name of John Winthrop. And John Winthrop set a clear vision for this new nation upon his arrival to the New England area in 1630. And this is what he said, that quote behind me. Here's what he said, 1630. For we must consider... That, will, that we shall be, he's talking about Christians coming to this new land, for we must consider that we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people, those people that they left back in the old country, the eyes of all people are upon us. So that, that if we deal falsely with our God, 
in this work we have undertaken, and so cause him, that's God, to withdraw his present help from us, we shall open the mouths of enemies to speak evil of the ways of God. Therefore, his challenge, as they entered the new country, the new nation, wasn't a country yet, just this new land, therefore, let us choose life, that we and our seed may live by obeying the voice, his voice, and cleaving to him, for he is our life and our prosperity. End of quote, John Winthrop, 1630. I wonder sometimes when I read that quote a while back, if John Winthrop was thinking of the words of Jesus from Matthew chapter 5. Bring that up for me, Kristen. Matthew chapter 5, you know these verses as well as I do. When Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount that day, and says to us, who will claim the name of Jesus, who will commit our lives to Christ, who will walk with Jesus. This is what Jesus said. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. That means our lives, when we give them fully to Christ, not that we go around boasting about that, but our lives in Christ cannot be hidden. And Jesus said further, Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. And then he challenges those that were sitting there that day, <clears throat> as well as the Winthrop's in between, and us today. He challenges us with this as we embark on a new year. Let your light so shine. People of Jesus, followers of God, let your light so shine before the world. Before the people around us, before men, Jesus said, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Those are the words of Jesus. And those words of Jesus remind me of another set of verses that are a challenge to the children of Israel 1,400 years or so before Jesus, the words of Joshua from Joshua 24, 14, and 15, when Joshua said this, if you know anything about the book of Joshua, you know that they had gone into the promised land. You know that they had taken care of the Canaanites and the inhabitants there to a large degree. <coughs> Moses is long gone. Moses has is, is been out of the picture for a bunch of years. Joshua is about to, about to pass on. And he challenges the children of Israel with this. He says, now therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river. And in Egypt. And again he says, serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, he said, we will serve the Lord. When I think of that quote from... Uh, you can bring that first one back up if you would, please, Kristen. When I think of that... John Winthrop quote, quote in 1630 as he embarked on a new land. I wonder if he was thinking about the words of Joshua or I wonder if he was thinking about the words of Jesus or both. I've been thinking about these words the last few days because we're about to embark on a new year. And I realize when you think about God in his omnipotence and omnipresent and omniscience, I, I think 
He don't go by calendars like we do, okay? I get that. But we are about to embark on a new year. I think of the hope and the opportunity of a new year, but I also look at America, and friends, you've heard me say this a lot of times, America's in trouble. Are you hearing me this morning? Morally, spiritually, financially, we're in trouble. And I know I've said that before, and some of you are probably thinking, oh, please, Jim, give me a break. Here we go again. Can't you think of something original? Well, yeah, I can, but this is serious. The conditions which we live today. I see this challenge of people like Winthrop. I see this challenge from Jesus. I see the words of Joshua. And I see what's happening in America. And I'm saying something went wrong somewhere. Something is wrong in America today. Chris just give you some statistics about People that are passionately living for Christ is a very, very small percentage in America today. And so even though you may, even though you may be thinking, when I say we're in trouble in America, you may be thinking, oh, here we go again. Let me, let me ask you to consider a couple things from the scriptures and the quote I just read. From the quote that's there on the big screen in front of you, and you at home maybe can't see that as well, but you can look it up, John Winthrop, 1630. Ask ourselves, have we lived according to what John Winthrop stated and hoped for in 1630? He said, for we must consider that that we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of the people are upon us. And how are we going to do that? He concludes by obeying His voice and cleaving to Him. For He is our life and our prosperity. And and I think of a quote like that from people that came here a long time ago. And I ask myself, have we lived like that as a nation? And I look at the words of Jesus and... Matthew chapter 5, when he said to followers of Christ, I'm not talking about denominations, I'm talking about people, and Jesus was talking to people that day, talking to and about people that will commit to follow Christ. He said, you're going to be the light. When you look at all the I am statements of Jesus, one of them is, he said, I am the light of the world. But he passes that on, and he says to followers of himself, followers of Christ, you are the light, and you can't hide your light. He doesn't say you got to go around bragging about who you are and beating yourself on the back about who you are, but your life should reflect Jesus. You are the light of the world, he said. And a city said on that hill, you can't hide it. That's what Jesus said. And I ask ourselves, is the church living like that? And I asked us to consider for a moment the words of Joshua. Have we chosen wisely? He said, choose for yourself this day whom you're going to serve. He said, fear the Lord, serve the Lord, and choose who you're going to serve. I don't know what all we're going to hear. Casey mentioned that we're going to hear from uh, Brian Thorstead. That's just two weeks from today. I hope you can be with us for our annual meeting. And, and after our two services here, we'll go to the fellowship hall. We'll have some lunch together. And then we're going to bring in Brian on, on the big screen and Zoom and And I don't know what all he's going to tell us, but I know some of the things that we learned from the revitalization process and the surveys that you all took, some of you took in in August and September. And one of the things we learned about the demographics of our community. This is our community because we asked and we paid for this demographic. Show us, tell us something about more about our community. It talks about the wages and talks about the ethnicity and it talks about all kinds of things and it talks about who goes to church and who don't. And 60 some percent of our community no longer goes to church. You say, well, Jim, that don't mean I'm not a believer. 
No, I know it doesn't, but I'm simply asking us, when I think of these quotes from Winthrop, and I think of Jesus' words when he says, you're the light, and I think of Joshua, choose you this day whom you'll serve, I ask us if 60-some percent of this community no longer gives God the hour or the two on Sunday morning, then how important is Jesus to me? And so I think of the condition of our nation as we are embarked, about to embark on a brand new year, and I think of the challenges from Scripture and men of God of old to the church, and I just challenge us, I just challenge us, will we be light this year? Will we be light for Jesus? Will we choose to walk with Him every day? I'm not saying you got to be choose to be born again every day. You do need to be born again. But what will we choose this year? I say America's in trouble and people think I'm overreacting, but let me me give you just a couple of examples of why I say what I say today. I was reading these from Christian Post this last 10 days, two weeks, and one of them was as recent as two days ago. But listen to these headlines in America, the United States of America. This first quote, this is is the title of the article, and I read it in its entirety, and I'll quote a little bit of it, but this this is the title. It says, Wake up America, pornography is the new religion. That's the title. And I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. But it doesn't surprise me because I read a lot and I, and I try to glean what's going on around us. And, and here's what this article is about. Let me just quote it, a couple of paragraphs. And I quote, The school board saw a sweep of far left-leaning candidates. Carl Fritsch was elected by a vote of 67% in the district. Carl happens to be an LGBTQ activist, but he was elected by 67% in this district. And he ran on this list of actions to make sure transgender students can use the bathroom of their choice, to enforce the use of preferred pronouns, to ensure Pornographic material is fully stocked on the shelves of the local school library. That's what he ran on. And 67% of them said, yes, this is who we want. And if that isn't enough, two weeks ago, in an act of defiance, the article says, against the Judeo-Christian moral grounding upon which our republic was conceived, Mr. Fritsch chose to be sworn into the office as vice chair of the Fairfax County School Board. If you know anything about the school districts in America, it's one of the biggest ones in America. He was sworn in as vice chair of the Fairfax County School Board on Thursday, December 14th, by placing his hand on a stack of pornography books instead of the Bible. Fairfax County Schools have 13,000 teachers. That's their vice chair. How did we arrive here? When President George Washington took his oath of the office in 1789, he placed his hand on an open Bible, and after he took his oath, he kissed the Bible. And he said this, bring that up for me, Kristen. It would be peculiarly improper to omit in this first official act my fervent supplication to that almighty being who rules over the universe, who, provide, pro, who presides in the councils of nation, and whose providential aid can supply every human defect. President Washington continues, no people 
can be bound to acknowledge and adore the invisible hand which conducts the affairs of men more than the people of the United States. End quote. That's our first president. And now we get these headlines that says, Wake up America, pornography is the new religion of America. And I wonder where we went wrong. If that isn't enough, last two weeks I read a whole lot more articles of the condition of our nation. And I wonder how we got here. Where's the light? Where's the light? Where's the choosing to follow Jesus? Where's the choosing to stand up for Him? Headline from another article, and I'm just going to give you the article, the, the article headlines because I don't have time to elaborate on them, but this headline is, New York, that's the state, New York bill would force Chick-fil-A to open on Sundays for the public good. Do you know anything about Chick-fil-A, friends? 1946, chicken to uh, compete maybe with uh, the Colonel Sanders. 1946, Truett Cathy opened up his chicken business and called it Chick-fil-A, and they have never worked on a Sunday since 1946. They have set apart Sunday for God and God has honored that business. Now, true, it is long past, and his son Dan is in charge, and they have stood for traditional marriage. They, stood for, they stand for what the Bible says, and they have taken all kinds of ridicule from the left and from all these other places, and, and people wanting to shut them down, and now the hypocrisy of the state that says, we're going to consider a law, a bill, that forces you now to stay open on Sunday for the public good. And once again, I will probably hear say, Jim, you're overreacting. And then I read this article that says, here's the headline, California toy stores without gender-neutral sections can face fines under their new law. In other words, you got your Barbies over here for your little girls, you got your little, you got your little cows and tractors over here, your little boys, and if you don't have a gender neutral section because of the new law in California, you can be fined now for not having gender neutral section. This is the America in which we live in today. There's all kinds more, but it's just disheartening to read them. This, this article headline said, Pornhub parent company pushes gay trans porn that can help kids find their way. Is that what we've come to? Helping kids find their way by offering gay and trans porn to them on every avenue on their phones and computers you can imagine? Is that what we've come to? Or is this what we've come to at Christmas time? I thought Christmas was about the birth of Jesus. That's what we just celebrated. And yet an article I read two days ago, the article headlines was, Hundreds Pray Against Christian-Themed Drag Show. That went 36... 36 large cities from California to North Carolina, a Christian-themed drag show. I thought Christmas was about Jesus. And cities from coast to coast in the last two weeks have been celebrating large cities, Christian-themed drag show. Back to the article that I quoted first, Wake Up America, because pornography is your new religion. How do we get here?
I fear there's going to be, if Jesus tarries much longer, there's going to be a document written by somebody today or sometime in the near future that says something like this. Once upon a time, there was this new people in this new land who honored and feared God, who stuck to His commands, who wanted to worship Him. But over the course of time, this document probably will read in the future, those same people forgot about God, and forgot about His commands, and forgot to fear Him, and forgot about His precepts, and they abandoned Him, They gave themselves over to their own debased mind, to their own lust, to their own sinful desires, and they did what was right in their own eyes. That's probably what the document will say in time. And so I challenge us, people of God, whether you're sitting here this morning or whether you're watching online, will we be light in this kind of atmosphere in 2024? Will we point others to the light? Will I live my life in such a fashion, in the factory, in the school, in the farm, in the home, will I live my life in such a factory that my life reflects the light of Jesus so that other people may see that light and see your good works and mine and glorify our Father in heaven because that's what He asked us to do. In the last two weeks, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people in and out of the church. I've talked with people that are struggling with demon oppression. I think I'm going to talk about spiritual warfare after we get through these holiday seasons because I think there's a tremendous need. But I've talked with people with demonization, sexual confusion. There's so many things, there are so many things that are affecting us today, friends. And I'm simply challenging us this on the eve of a brand new year. Followers of Jesus, we cannot sit around and expect anything to change. We cannot sit around and do nothing. We cannot sit around and not be light and expect anything to change that's going on all around us. This is the uh, eve of a brand new year, and for so many years I've been asking people, would you consider to read the Word? If you've never read the Word of God through, would, would you consider to read that? Yes, just to say you did it, but more importantly, to glean from the Word of God its truths. And so here we are again at the eve of a brand new year, and I would ask you again, would you consider reading the Word of God? There's a whole bunch of new Bible, newer Bibles out there, New Living Translation on that table. You take one, it's easy to read it, they're free. Will we pray as a church? Will we travail in prayer to God to to do a work in America again? Will we read His Word? Will we have time for Him at all? That's what Joshua was talking about when he said, you got to choose whether you're going to serve the gods of our fathers on the other side, or the gods of the Amorites, or the gods of the Egyptians, you have to choose what you're going to follow. The gods of America today are innumerable. I don't need to list them. You know what they are. They affect our lives every day. And if we're not careful, we fall into bowing to these things of lust and pleasure and greed and all the rest. That's why Joshua said, you've got to choose who you're going to follow. And so I'm asking us today, how important is Jesus to you? Whether you're watching online or whether you're sitting here this morning, how important is Jesus? Am I going to live for Him? Is my life going to reflect Him? Am I going to choose to follow Him? 
with all the competition that he has and all the competitions for my mind, am I going to choose him every day? Like I said, I'm not saying you have to be born again every day, but we have to choose to follow Jesus because the enemy will throw stuff into your path and into mine to get you to go in the direction away from God in the direction that the enemy wants if we're not very, very careful. Today is probably the last, uh, I'm going to wrap this up in a, in a minute here, but today is probably, probably the last Sunday that in the TV back here in the foyer, you see that in memory of, there's, there's a bunch of people there that we've lost and we've done their funerals for this year. Not every one of your family members, but those are the ones that we did here, and, and they're simply in memory of because we did their funerals here this year. And I was thinking about that as I looked at that this week. There's 20-some faces on there of people that we've lost. And I was thinking about those dear ones that we lost this year, and, and, and a lot more last year, and, and a lot more the year before. And, and I was thinking about 2024, and I was thinking there are people either watching by Facebook Live or that will sit here today, and absolutely people within our community they won't be here. Some of us won't be here one year from right now. That's just the way it is. And the first thing I challenge us all with, when you close your eyes in death, because the Bible reminds us there is an appointment. It is appointed for man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. We're going to close our eyes in death. And some of us, perhaps even here, perhaps watching, and absolutely in our community, they will not be here one year from right now. And my first question to us is, are you going to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant? Or are you going to hear, depart from me, I don't know who you are. Because Jesus makes a difference. And if you don't know Jesus, you're going to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. That's the first question for all of us. And the second question is, uh, if we've said, Jim, I've given my life to the Lord. I, I want to follow Jesus. I want to be the light. I want to choose wisely every day. I want to follow him faithfully. Then will I be the light in everyday living to, where, to the community that I live in, to the co-workers I work around, Will I be the light to my family that doesn't yet know Jesus? And I'm asking us as a church, what will we do for the kingdom of God? How can we be light for Jesus this year? Only you and the Lord can answer that, but he will give you opportunities to be light, I assure you. He will give us opportunities to tell others the good news of Jesus. I assure you, if you avail our, if I and you, if we avail ourselves to God and to the Spirit of God, He will give you opportunities. He will put people in your path that need Jesus. He will give us opportunities to be light. You don't have to be, and I don't have to be proud and boastful about it. We just need to commit to live for Jesus. How can we be the light for Jesus this year? The other day, Casey helped a man do a little banking in a different town. He lives in Staples. He doesn't drive anymore. He needs some help. He's on oxygen. Casey was helping him out. And Rob, helping him out a little bit. And Casey put a plea on Facebook and asked if someone would be willing to help this fellow get to the bank just once a month or maybe to Walmart once a month, just a ride once or twice a month. Nobody responded. Nobody Now I realize lots of you don't see Facebook. You're probably the lucky ones. But hundreds of people do. 
in case he put out one simple little plea. Here we've got a brother that simply needs a ride to get to his bank once a month, maybe get to Walmart once a month. He don't have a car. Could somebody help us? Nobody responded. Casey also wrote in the Facebook post the words of Jesus from Matthew 24, 25, when Jesus said, and as much as you have done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. I simply say that because God will put opportunities in our pathway, friends, to be the light of Jesus, both to the both to the church people, to the believers, and to the unchurched people, to the non-believers. God will put people in our paths, and we must ask ourselves, am I going to be the light for him or not? Time is gone, so I need to wrap this up. I just want to say this again. Thank you so much for being so gracious to Sherry and I. Thank you to so many of you for sacrificially giving of yourselves, your time, your tithes, your talents. I don't know what God will do amongst us in 2024. I don't know what God will have of Jim in 2024. But I'm committed like Joshua to say, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve him. And I'm committed to what Jesus challenged us with in Matthew chapter 5. I'm committed to, with the, with the enabling of the Spirit of God, to be light for Jesus to somebody. And I'm just come asking you as a church, as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, will we be light in a very dark time in America's history? And I know we could say, Jim, I think we're too far gone. I think there's too many problems. I don't think I can do anything. And I simply, I simply ask us to ponder what Jesus said. Number one, just let your light shine right where you're at. And see who God works on because you're living for Christ. Or I ask us to consider a multitude of other stories in the Bible where God showed himself strong through a single person. He didn't need multitudes. He doesn't need me and he doesn't need you. But he challenges us to be light so that people will see that light and they will see what you're doing for the light and they will glorify God in heaven. That's what he asks of us. And so I simply challenge us on the eve of this new year. Will we choose to be light for Jesus this year? Will we choose to tell others the good news? Will we choose to live for him? Will we choose to reject the temptation that the devil throws in our way of all these other gods And will we choose to follow Him every day? That's what I'm challenging us with for this new. I pray that we choose Him. I pray that we choose to be light. I pray that we choose wisely for the glory of God. Ladies, let's sing this song to close. Let's stand and sing this song to close.
I should have said, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, men. <laughs> Lead us in this last song. Friends, let us close in prayer, but prayer with a challenge. Will we live for Jesus in 2024? <laughs> and if you're still wondering, you're watching online today, or you're here with us in person, and you're still wondering, I'm not sure I'm even surrendered completely to the Lord, I'd start right there. I'd start right there by surrendering, repenting of all sin, turning to Christ and saying, Lord, take over. I'd start right there. And for those of you that have given your life to Jesus, may we commit this new year to live for him that makes a difference for his glory. Not for Jim, not for Casey, not for the Free Methodist Church, but for the glory of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you. I'm so thankful. And I know that everyone standing here and those watching online or two are so thankful for the blessings that you have blessed us with in America. We're so thankful for our heritage. But Father, as a nation, we have gone the way of the children of Israel in the Old Testament. We have allowed the other gods to influence us and to affect us. And so, Father, I simply say, please forgive us for that. Please forgive us in America for the other gods that have affected us and allowed us to get what we've gotten today in this great nation that you have blessed. Father, please redirect us as a nation Please breathe Holy Spirit life into your people, the people who have claimed Christ as Lord. Please revive your church, O oh God. Please help us in this new year to be light for Jesus in everyday living so that people will see Jesus living in us. They will see how we act how we respond, how we talk, how we think, and they will glorify our Father. Help us, Father, to be light this year for Jesus, for you, our Heavenly Father. And where we're not, show us that, Lord. And so as we embark on a new year, Father, we pray for the salvation of souls, that people would be born into the kingdom. We pray for the filling of the Spirit of God in your people, that we will live for Christ, that we will be light, that we will choose wisely. We pray, O oh God, that you would so revive your people that we would live so radical for you, so filled with love and light that others would want Jesus. And so go with us this day as we close out this year and we go on to a new one. Go with us this day and into the new year. Equip us and lead us and challenge us for the glory of God, I pray, as individuals, as families, as a church, as a community, as a nation. Revive us and save us and equip us for the glory of God, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen.